My conducting teacher was Maestro Lauren Mazel, and he used to tell me quite a lot about the Philharmonia because of his connection with the orchestra. He was very fond of this orchestra, so I've been very much looking forward to this experience. So Maestro Mazel, when we had the time to uh, work together, he didn't bring up too many orchestras at all, actually, during the discussions. And Philharmonia was among the few that he mentioned. And I think that showed how much um, connection uh, that he had with this group. When I was a younger uh, musician, uh, his mother had a very deep impression on me. That's how I grew up, uh, in a way, with Mahler, with Bernstein's Mahler, Mazel's Mahler, uh, and of course, uh, uh, Haitink's Mahler. Those are the three big milestones in, in terms of styles of interpretation. Uh, these are the three ones I look to. <laughs> das Lied von der Erde is very special to me because among all the symphonies, this one really talks more about the ending of life. And it's also interesting to, to note that this piece also, he wrote it at the very interesting time of his life, that he actually didn't get to hear the piece perform at the end of his life. The first performance took place after his death, about five months later. The piece that is very special to me is because of the poems as well that he used in it. It really had poems uh, taken uh, from the Tang Dynasty. Those poets growing up in China, you would have to learn and recite and memorize all of their poems. Uh, and to know ages later that a composer wrote orchestral music to this poem, it was something extraordinary to me as a musician, as a young musician. And I realized, oh my goodness, what a connection that is. And how, why would he be interested in the text of this? And that shows us really the connection in culture. I think we are connected through arts and poems and, and these art forms, uh, regardless of language or anything. The connection between Mahler's role in being a conductor and a composer actually is very evident on his scores. He's one of the composers who was very clear about how to conduct this section. He will say here in two. <laughs> he would just write it and with a big marking, you know, make sure it calls for your attention. But actually in this piece, uh, he never conducted himself. He actually, at one point, admitted to Bruno Water that he had trouble conceiving how to conduct one section. And I know exactly where he's talking about. It's in the last movement, the upsheet. There's this one bit of three against four, but the entire orchestra in his tempo marking is marked as in one. But it's just undoable. It, nobody really has the best solution to solve it. Each conductor would face that section. This sort of a strange waltz, but within the waltz, there's, uh, he put in very different rhythms in the orchestra. There's two, there's four, very complex. But the leading voice here is the alto that leads us all the way down to Avish, 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 as if there's never enough repetitions of that word. He wanted it to keep sounding forever. And that's really my favorite moment of it. Mm -hmm.